Wow. <laughs> That's unbelievable. James Porter and Elizabeth. How does it make you feel? It just, it is, it, it's kind of mind-boggling because, I mean, I, I only vaguely just remember talking and talking and, and telling that story. But, you know, when you see it like that, it just, it, it's, it's, for once in my life, I'm almost speechless. It's incredible. Let's listen to that just for a moment. Yeah, you are. Yeah. How vivid were the, uh, were the memories that you, that you had there? The memories were sort of vivid in, in places. Some bits were quite clear. And then when you kind of tried to zero in on maybe the name of the ship or what they were wearing or what the Cat of Nine Tails was really like, there were slight sort of blocks and things that you... It was kind of like your mind didn't want you to, to say everything or wouldn't give you all the information. So you didn't feel the pain of the, of the whipping? I felt like hot, a sort of hotness on my back. And also I felt like the kind of the creaking of the wood and the feeling of being slightly at sea. But then I thought that might have been because I, you know, went to Australia, when we immigrated to Australia in the 60s, we went for six weeks on a, on a ship. What sort of relationship do you, uh, do you have with the sea? I love the sea, I'm a Piscean, so anything to do with swimming pools or the sea, um, I love. And it didn't sound to me like the person, you know, that I'd sort of regressed to had a love of the sea. What do you know of, of uh, the sort of history of that time, the, the press gang? Did you know anything about press gang? I knew from school history that, um, from what I learnt in, in the UK before we immigrated to Australia, that... The Battle of Jenkins <laughs> Ear, have you ever heard I mean, of that? No, it sounds like something from a Monty Python sketch. But you don't know anything about no. that? No. Never heard of that before? No, we didn't do that. We didn't do much about the Spanish. Mm. And what about, what about this strange relationship with, uh, with, with food that seems to have sort of jumped these, these lives? Do you think that maybe you, uh, you'd created that sort of thin, hungry person in your, in your head because that's what you like to be? Maybe. I mean, the other thing also of, like, having to fight for your food is it's kind of one of the things that I had to get over on Fit Club was, you know, finishing my kids' f food, you know. If my kids leave uh, leftovers, and I'd always find myself finishing... When I, I'll, do this, I'll do the washing up and I'll be sort of scoffing at the, at, the, uh, at the draining board. But um, I think that that's another bizarre thing because it's, you know, it's not like me to be kind of... I'm thin and I'm fighting for my food. I don't think I've ever had to fight for my food in the, in the Coleman household. So what, what, have there been any changes in, in, in your head? Watching, watching this now, um, has, that, has that changed you in any way? I'm still Jonathan Coleman. I'm still the same person. But I know that if you are willing to let yourself be a little bit more open-minded, that you can, in fact, experience other things. That is history. It's like living history, and I think that's quite exciting. Mm, OK, all right, for the moment. Uh, we've heard what, uh, what Jono thinks. Of course, it's up to you to make your own mind up now. What do you believe? Here's what the experts have to say on it all. When Jono was eight, he went with his family to Australia, by boat, probably on the £10 immigration scheme. The fact that in his regression he sees himself sailing somewhere, he's not quite clear, maybe down the Caribbean, I think again, being press-ganged, when you're a kid you do what your parents tell you. As a 17-year-old, he's press ganged by the Navy. Again, this feeling of compulsion, of being control out of his hands, somebody else is controlling his life. The idea that you might overeat in the present life because you starved to death in a previous life may provide you with some comfort as an explanation, but it's not a good starting point for curing the problem, dealing with it in the here and now. I don't think Jono's invented that life to subjugate his responsibility for being overweight in this lifetime. Often in private practice I see people going back to lives where they were very thin in past lives and they're overweight in this lifetime and a lot of them have lost weight by cutting the ties to that past life. However, your conscious mind has also got to take part in stopping that cycle of events as well. So there you go, uh, when it comes down to it there is of course just that one question what do you believe? What do you believe now? Uh, yes or no? Have we been here before? Have you been here before? I think so, yeah. I think we've all been here before. Some of us block it out and don't want to know about it. And other people, I guess, are sort of um, adventurers and willing to open up their minds and just sort of experience it. If it doesn't do us any harm and no one else is being harmed by it, I think it's a, an exciting thing to do. And as long as you're doing it with the right people in the right way, I think it's a good thing. All right, Jono, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's it for today. Join us next time for another chance to explore the possibility that we might have all been here before.